Hi again, Bob here. I hope you enjoyed my story about the silvery white beaver. You know, that was, as I said before, the first Cecil story that I was ever told. And every time I tell it, I enjoy it myself so much. I thought it would be interesting if I told you some of the important facts about a beaver. They are an incredible animal. You know, they're a rodent. And they belong to that family of rodents. And we're the only country in the world that has a rodent as its national symbol. But because of its incredible lifestyle, our government was really impressed by its work ethic and how it lived. And so they made it our national symbol. What's really interesting though, if you look at the Canadian nickel, it has a beaver on it. It's not a brown beaver. It's a silvery white beaver. And I sometimes like to think that our government was so impressed with the beaver when they put it on, they must have heard Cecil's story about the silvery white beaver. And so they made it silvery white on the nickel. But as I said, there's so many interesting facts about the beaver. You know, his teeth, they're bucked. And the reason that they are is because it allows them to chew wood underwater without really opening their mouth so no water can get into their throat. And their teeth are so hard. There's iron in them. And they say that that prevents decay. But what's really important, if the beaver doesn't use his teeth every day and chew wood, they grow. And by eating or chewing wood, it stops them from growing. It wears them down a little bit. But if they did grow, they would fill the bottom of its mouth and it couldn't get food past them. So it's important that it always stays active. Now, beavers, when they dive underwater, there's a film that comes over their eyes and it allows them to see much better. It's like when you and I wear goggles when we go swimming. And the other thing that happens is that there's a flap in their nose and there's flaps in their ears when they go underwater. Water won't get up their nose and it, and it protects their ears from any water going in there. And it's said that beavers can hear better underwater than they can above water. Now, as beavers work really hard and they love water. They're very, very agile in water. They can go so fast underwater and they use their tails as a rudder. If they want to turn this way, they just turn their tail and their whole body moves. They also, of course, use their tail to slap on top of water. In my case, or Cecil's case, was to say goodbye, say home, my friend, but they use it to alert other beavers that there's danger. And when they're cutting a tree down, they use it almost like a chair for support. They sit on it so they won't tip over backwards. Their feet are webbed so that they can swim faster. Now they build their lodges on a stream or a small body of water. And they, they come out of the water nearly every day or every evening when they're most out and they, they'll cut trees down and they'll bring limbs back or they'll bring the smaller trees back to build their dams. When they've eaten all the available trees around and they need more, rather than go a farther distance on land, they build their dam higher so that the water will spread out over the land so they can get closer to the land in the water. Now, when winter comes along, what they do is they, just before freeze up, they take the mud out of the bottom of the beaver pond and they put it all around their beaver lodge. So when it gets cold below freezing, that mud will freeze. So Mr. Fox, Mr. Wolf, Mr. Raccoon, they can walk across the, the, the ice now to get to the beaver lodge, but the, they try to get in and they can't.
The outside is like cement. One of the other things that they do that I find so interesting is that often when I was a kid, I would go to beaver lodges and watch for them. And I always noticed great big trees that they fall on the ground. And I thought to myself, you know, they're not really that smart. They can't drag those big trees to the water to help with their dam or their lodge building. But then one day I was sitting there and there was this big tree and a beaver came along and went to the top of it and chewed the branches off with the limbs and the bark, the softwood, like, oh, the poplar or the aspen. And he took them back to the water and he disappeared under the water. And I found out later that what they do is they stick them in the bottom of the pond. So in the winter, when all the ice is formed and they can't swim, they swim out their tunnel they swim under the ice to where their, their stock of all these tree limbs are and they pull them out of the mud and they swim them back and that's their winter food. Now, there's a lot, lot more important facts. Maybe one more I can tell you is the first stamp that Canadian Canada ever had was produced by England and it had a picture of the beaver on it. So if you're ever in school and your teacher says she wants you or he wants you to do an essay on, on something, think about doing it on the beaver. There's lots of information in the library that you can gain from it. So look them up and see all the other interesting facts about the beaver. Thanks for listening. Take care and I'll see you with another story real soon. Bye-bye. With my storytelling, I hope that I have portrayed the influence that Cecil's values and way of life have had on me. If for any reason you wish to contact me, especially for end time storytelling, you can reach me at bobgramstorytelling at gmail.com. Hope you might give me a like if you see fit, or if you'd like to subscribe, please do so. Thank you.